Well, welcome to another session of Ditch the Diet and Face the Feelings. I'm Beth Gray, a life coach um, that focuses really on all of those feelings that we stuff down with our food. <laughs> that when we're not actually hungry, we still eat because we're not in touch with how we're really doing. And we mistake that discomfort for hunger. And it's not hunger, but we, we take care of it that way. So with me today are Sandra and Sammy. So I will let Sammy go first and introduce herself. Hello, I'm Sammy D. I live in England. I am the author of My Big Fat Fat, a funny book about dieting. And I'm also a coach. And you can find me on Facebook, Samantha D. And yeah, that's me. Hello. <laughs> and Zandra. Hi, everyone. I'm Zandra. I live in Southern Ontario. I'm a IPE coach, intuitive eating coach, um, and a regular health coach, life coaching. And, um, and she was a registered nurse before that. That too. <laughs> And a real estate agent, if you have to know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, right now I'm busy studying for my I ANWCB exam. So, which is more um, health coaching? <laughs> it actually uh, registers me with the coaches board. Yeah, is awesome. what it will do. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, should be great. So uh, today we're talking about selfishness versus selflessness and the importance of both of them. Because the, the reality is that, you know, when we're too selfless, we get lost. We get burned out. We burn out. Absolutely. Yeah. And we start living up to other people's expectations rather than living our own dreams. And then, you know, all kinds of things start happening in our health and our wellness and our energy levels. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, selfishness can also take us down the wrong road. Right. And it's taken too far. Yeah. So um, I like as an MBIC coach talk, talking about compassion, compassion for myself and compassion for others. And I like to explain it like breathing. You want to be doing breathing in compassion for yourself and breathing out compassion for others in such a way that you're finding balance. Right. That you're not overdoing one or the other. I you think it's an interesting... You didn't breathe in. <laughs> it's an interesting conversation in the context of families because yeah. certainly in this arena, if you've got a parent looking to, you know, do more with their weight or health, then, you know, they've got the whole family to look after as well yeah. as, you know, following a program like this one. Right. Um, so it'd be interesting in that context to talk about where the balance is between being selfless and caring for your family, but being selfish uh, in terms of, you know, looking after yourself. I think the biggest thing that I run across with women is that the minute they talk about any type of self-care or compassion for themselves, right? It's always, I can't do that because that's just being too selfish and I'm denying my family. But if you think about your cup, what is it? Is it half full or is it empty? And how are you going to give if everything in your cup, in your personal cup, is so empty that you're tired, you're exhausted, you're burnt out, you're, you're stressed. You know, you've lost your patience. Patience. <laughs> you know, or would you rather take that 20 minutes, 10 minutes a day, yeah. Do your own self-care, fill your cup up to full so that you have what to give. We Absolutely. can't give. And I really 
you notice that? I mean, I, and I've talked to both of you about that in the last two weeks. Having somebody back in my life that is helping with Little Miss Six three mornings a week and having my cleaning lady back makes such a difference in how much energy I have and how willing I am to spend time with my six-year-old. I'm no longer looking to hide in the bathroom thinking I just want five minutes to myself, okay? Because, well, I mean, we're still in lockdown here. So literally, it's me and her 24-7. I'm not I, getting a break. I don't know okay. how you do that without being in the papers the next day, really. <laughs> I, I, I have only... to say, Sammy, I am a whole lot stronger, more patient, and more resilient than I ever imagined. If there's yeah. one thing I've learned from lockdown, it's, oh my gosh, I could never have imagined that I could survive this. Of, it, of, it would have finished me for sure. <laughs> we, we laugh about it takes a village to raise a child, and... While I don't agree that the village needs to raise my child, I need the village for me to be in a safe space yeah. and have a break. You know, um, in, in order for me to, to take a, a step back and go, okay, just, just take a breath, focus, look after yourself. And you know, in order for me to give the best of me instead of the rest of me, I have to take care of me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an introvert. I like alone time. My daughter's yeah. an extrovert. <laughs> well, that's a good combo there. <laughs> a, a, a few I, riffs. <laughs> I had never noticed how extroverted she was until being closed up. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't when, notice when she's away at school and she's visiting grandma on thursdays and she's got an activity on tuesdays she's not always coming home absolutely need to chat with you sometimes she does sometimes she doesn't but i've had enough hours of being alone that i've got energy and space for that well yeah. i'm the only person she's got to talk to <laughs> And, and the reality is, for her, I'm the only person she's got to talk to. And don't you think that, you know, when you spend time on your own energy, then you... There's so can, much more to give. Yes, you can radiate Absolutely. wider. Because I think Absolutely. once you start burning out, your energy levels just start getting smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. Until you just can't, you know, operate. You have to, it's almost like you have to plug yourself in every night. Um, or yeah, every and I mean, like, if you, I mean, like, and, and that's a great analogy. I mean, like, you look at your phone and it gets down to, it gets down to 15% or 10% and you're looking to recharge it. You don't wait for the phone to get down to 3% before you recharge. Right. Oh, okay? I do. You most certainly... <laughs> There's you, always you one, isn't there? You don't want to turn it off and then go, ah, oh, oops, I forgot to charge the phone. Well, I mean, may, maybe I do occasionally, but generally speaking, you don't let the phone turn itself off, okay? But how many women, and, and I guess men do it too, but I see it so much more with women. Right. And Just, I think too, Beth, particularly during this time that we're going through, more women are into a mode of stressed. They're burning out because they've got no support yes. or very little. And they're the sole ones that are really the caregivers of the whole yes. family. Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. and I think for me, I read an article, I can't remember where I read it the other day, and I should have wrote the numbers down, particularly for this talk. Um, but I think as women, I think if you just stop for a moment and if you have a mate or older kids in the house, you know, step up to the plate and say, hey, you know what? You have a choice today. Could you do this or will you do this? 
which one are you going to do? I need your help. Go to the next one and say, I need this or this done. What would you like to do? And you can even get the younger ones involved in that too and give them a choice of what are they going to do? Who's going to do what? But I mean, one of, one of the things that, that I think I mean, is a great discussion, and I've seen a number of men write about this, is that they're not there to help their wives with the kids. It's just as much their responsibility as it is hers. And yet, there are some men that think they're doing you a favor by helping with the kids. It's like, well, wait a minute. You're doing me a favor by helping with the kids? How's that working? Okay, but as women, are we creating it? Are we allowing it? Yes. Am I saying, don't do that, I'll do it better? Right. Because I've fallen into that. I've fallen into, oh, just leave it. Would you just leave it? I'll do it myself. Just get the hell out and I'll do it. Exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, but we're, not, we're doing ourselves a disservice. Exactly. Okay. And, and I know for me, before lockdown, I had life pretty well organized where I was getting alone time and I was getting self-care time, okay? I hadn't had a weekend away or anything like that for a while, but I had people I could call on and say, look, I need a night off. Can she do a sleepover? I had that support. I mean, we are um, kind of raised to be polite and we're kind of taught that saying no is bad aren't right. we yeah so you we're know so we're also taught and it's and it's not really our fault so just take that into consideration it's not our fault it's a generational thing yeah. our grandmothers our parents our moms our grandmothers their moms and their moms and their moms were pretty much the caretakers of the home and Absolutely. the caretakers of the children because it was the men that were out working. We didn't have this happening until really the industrial age where the women started going out to work. But our roles in the home didn't, didn't change, change. change yeah. and the right. men didn't step up to the rules of even wanting it to change they wanted to be taken care of in the home they wanted their meal ready because that's what they experienced from their moms that's and, 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 exactly and you have to understand it. that you know and, and um it's, it's one of those things of recognizing, okay, well, what is my experience and what am I, what am I putting out? Okay. Um, I yeah. can remember early on in my marriage relationship, I used to have every month a weekend away with my girlfriends. And before I was even married, he started saying, I don't like you going away for weekends with your girlfriends. And I stopped. That was my mistake. That's on me. Yes, exactly. I did not say, actually, you know what? The best thing for our relationship is I have a weekend every month away with my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Of course, right. 2020 vision in hindsight, you look back and you can see everything clearly. Okay, big mistake on my part. I should have said sure. no. But like we just said, we're not used to saying no. And, and one of the reasons yeah. why we say ditch the diet, face the feelings, is face the feelings, face the uncomfortableness of having yeah. boundaries, of, of having to stay up and s stand up for yourself and say, this doesn't feel good, but I've got to say it. For mm -hmm. my own peace of mind, I need to say this. I need to express it. I need to ask for help. And it goes to food choices as well, because exactly. I remember the years and years I used to go to the conventional diet clubs, you know, I, a lot of women would be in there saying, well, I've got a whole family to feed and I can't feed all yeah. those and then do something different for myself. You know, and so they were, 
beauty of kind ditching of, the diet facing the feeling is that yeah. suddenly you're looking at there is no diet and and i mean i'll sit down with isabella and we negotiate what we're cooking for meals now yeah. there are moments where i'll do something different from her than what i do for me because she wants macaroni and cheese and there's a no way i'm eating that <laughs> um and, yeah. and too though i think that you know Exactly, Sammy. I heard that too when I was part of Weight Watchers and, and women were like, oh, we can't cook this because we've got to feed this and we can't do this because we got to do that. And it was like, you know. And that's another that's thing that's wrong with the diet industry, isn't it? Exactly. Because they're saying, hey, here's a book of recipes, you know, make these, breakfast, lunch, dinner, good luck, you're going to lose weight on this diet. Well, they're not thinking about the whole family that has to be fed. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And I have to say, I'm so glad I grew up with a mom who very down to earth. She was a nurse. She was really into, you know, let food be your medicine. Yeah. But we all ate the same thing. And, and I grew up with, she'd make broccoli with cheese sauce and then not put the cheese sauce on her broccoli. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. that kind of, you know, and, and so I grew up seeing, Hey, you know, you can eat it this way. You can eat it that way. Yeah. And with, with Isabella, she'll still to this day, if I will cook peas, broccoli, steamed peas, steamed broccoli and steamed chicken breast, she'll eat that without batting an eyelid thinking that's a perfectly normal meal. She doesn't know any differently. She doesn't know she's supposed to have chicken nuggets and French fries. Yeah. Because that's not how she was brought up. But the great thing about I've never this, the great thing about this program is that because the conventional diets are gone, you know, you can bring back that kind of fun. Yes. Because if you think back to the old conventional diet club days. Oh. Can you imagine how traumatized the, the woman in the family would feel at meal times? Oh God, I've got to make for these, and then I've got to make for these, and then I've got to do something for myself that's this diet. Yeah. So, you know, and that's I live another that. thing. It makes them resent meal yeah. times even more. <laughs> I, yeah. I lived that same four kids in the house and a husband, and I did that. I cooked meals for them. Nice. And yeah. a meal for me, and it was yeah. like, wow! It was like, nightmare. wow! It was a nightmare. It was like, holy shit! How the heck am I supposed to get this done? And yeah. I and, and it was, a so lot when of we talk about the selflessness versus the self care. Um, you're 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 spreading yourself so thin while you're trying. Yeah. On the one hand, to look after yourself. Yeah. yeah. By looking after your weight but without really acknowledging this is causing me a whole lot more stress. And we all know what stress does for our, our digestion. And I mean, this is another thing. And I've had to sometimes accept that I don't sit down to eat with Little Miss Six because I don't get to sit down and rest. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll finish taking care of you. And then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to enjoy my meal. And I'm not going to get up out of my chair. Now, there's times I get it all together and she has everything she needs and I get to sit down and enjoy my meal. But if I notice that I'm not enjoying it, if I, if I feel that it is stressful, I'll take a step back and go, okay, you know what? I'm going to finish taking care of you and then I'm going to sit down because rest and digest is about allowing your body also to be in a non-stressed moment when you're sitting down to eat. You want your digestive system to participate fully yeah. in digestion. Yeah. 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 I think too, the other thing that when we're looking at all of this though, is that we've grown up, probably our moms have been on some form of a diet or our oh, grandmothers <laughs> or somebody else. Right. And we begin to pick up those things and, and that think absolutely good yes. foods and bad foods rather than 
food is just nutrition. Yes. So this conversation is kind of, again, turned into why the conventional diet industry <laughs> is foobard. It's really fessed up beyond all recognition. But There's I mean, so like, many things I, wrong I'm, with constantly, it. I'm constantly seeing offers of such and such a coffee. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, basically take a laxative. That'll work. It, I mean, obviously I realize, but I mean, that, that, that's how I read it. When they say, you know, I've got the greatest coffee for losing weight. I'm like, yeah, there is so much better ways than that. Um, or, you know, here's this, this shake. Now I love shakes for the convenience of them. Okay. Yeah. I love the fact that if you're on the run and you need a meal, you can, you can take the shake with you. Okay. I do love that. But for me thinking that this is going to be a meal replacement program and I'm going to do this seven days a week for how many weeks. And then what happens when you come back off that and you try to go back to a normal diet if you haven't dealt with all the underlying issues, because at the end of the day, if my eating is out of whack and I'm eating when I'm not hungry, it's because I've got something I'm not dealing with. Yeah. I, I think too, Beth, because, and we have talked about this. I was on the one program and I think it's really important to bring this up. If you're, depending on your job, I was community nurse, so we never ate. Right, shit. We'd start our shift and we'd go, right? We were on the go until we finished our clients. Uh, and then you get home and you're starving. But that's not self-care. No. And what happens is you're messing with your metabolism, which Absolutely. is part of your self-care. Oh, my gosh. And that's yeah. all part of being self-care. And, and being either selfish or selfless, whichever – but take a look at what is that daily routine like? Where can you make some shifts? How yeah. can you do some changes? Rather than hitting a diet that you think is going to have the lasting results, be aware, not always. It needs to be a lifestyle change. And, and that's one of the biggest challenges is that, you know, like for me, I've had to learn of you're not eating in front of the computer. Exactly. I still catch yeah. myself. I sat down with my plate in front of the computer. It's like, <laughs> what am I doing? What am I, what, right. why am I here? Yeah. What is so important on the computer that I don't have 15 minutes to sit at the dinner table and eat? Yeah. And another thing, exactly. you know, that, this whole lockdown situation could turn into a blessing because oh, people are being given the opportunity to say, right, I've got now got time to be selfish. Absolutely. Right? And I hope so that's true for so I many I really people. hope yeah. that when, when industry and commerce starts up again, people will say, actually, I want to change my hours. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or you know what? Well, I don't want to go to the office five days a week. I'd like to work exactly. four days a week in the office. I'd like to do one day a week yeah. at home. And I, I and pray that, that would happen. Yeah. Really I, I think this is this is the ideal time to, and I've not really spoken about this, but I think it's the ideal time now is to really look inside and and realize what your life was like prior to this. And I know it's such a stressful time because people have really? lost their wages and they've lost, some of them have lost their jobs because they've been laid off. It's, it's difficult times. It's not easy financial times. But I think now is the time to really look inside. What do you really want for you? And, and what's family. really important? I mean, what have you learned? What's important? Because I mean, one of the things that's really come up for me, and, and I've, I've said that to both of you, is recognizing how absolutely blessed and privileged I am. You know, just right. recognizing of, oh my God, you know, one, my lifestyle was already, I was working from home already. 
So I didn't have a, oh my God, how, what am I going to do with my life? Oh, well, life just is, the, oh, the, the, the oh my God was, oh my goodness, I've got a kid now that's doing online classes and I got to fit that into my schedule. Yeah. So yeah. that was, but not the rest of it. Yeah. 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 And I think uh, taking time, really taking time to examine where you're yeah. at and what do you really want to see for your life? And, and I think that's so important. Now's the time where you can, if you're Christian and you want to read your Bible, do that. If you're wanting to learn how to meditate, now's the time. You've got that space. If you're doing nothing do else, it. sit outside with your shoes and socks off. Yes. Yeah. Shoes and socks off. Just touch the ground, not the cement, not the gravel, the grassy, dirty earth. If you can be close to a tree, even better. Yep. And just allow yourself to soak that feeling in. Um, of, of just being still. Yeah. Just taking that moment of, okay, I have nothing to do, nowhere to be. I mean, my neighbors go AWOL at me because every time they see me, I'm outside standing in the grass barefoot. And they're like, you can't be barefoot in the grass. There could be ants. And I'm like, so what's going to happen? So you might get an ant bite. But, right. Okay. Chances but are the not. Biggest, but... the, the biggest thing that chases me out of my garden is the mosquitoes, admittedly. Those, you know, after I've gotten the second or the third bite, I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Enough mosquitoes for today. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's just, it's, it's taking that, this time, Life has slowed down. I mean, I don't know about you, but it feels like Australian bushfires were years ago. Away. Yeah. And this yeah. pandemic okay. would turn into a mini renaissance. I mean, aside, I hate comparing. So what are we going to create? What are we going to really, I mean, like, if you look at the renaissance, yes, things slowed down, but things also suddenly took on a huge awakening a so huge. i mean it would be a real blessing if people sort of said well this is a disaster i've lost my job but actually i didn't i can survive on less i can i can and, and you know, i didn't actually enjoy this part of my job but this part i did so let's focus on this why do i love and i mean like Maybe, maybe there's something you've been too scared to do so far. Yeah. Well, you've got all the time to do it right now. You got nothing to lose. I mean, and what have you got to lose? Is, mm -hmm. The entire planet is in the same boat. Yes. Absolutely. You know, most of us are without work or have lost their jobs. And I'm not making light of that situation at all because it's a horrible, horrible feeling. Yeah. But in terms of the stress and the worrying about it, people are kind of mm -hmm. thinking, well, everyone has lost their job. So it's not so bad. No better, no worse than anyone else. Absolutely. Exactly. So I think that's, that's the time where people start thinking in a selfish, self-care way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, selfish in a good way. Selfish in a self-care way. Um, how do I make the best of this situation for me and my family? Yeah. How do I actually come out of this for the better? Yeah. And how is your whole um, family relationship, your whole, the whole family unit, how is it going to come out on a better side? I mean, we make jokes about, you know, Beth having her daughter home all day long, yeah. every day for the whole of lockdown, right? We, we, we kind of have a giggle about that and say, hey, Beth, how's it going? <laughs> but, you know, she's spending more time than she perhaps would have. Yes. And they're both discovering different things about each other. Absolutely. How is that about time? And we're having amazing conversations. Hi. And Hi. speak <laughs> of the devil. Speak of her. She's right there. I think, too, and I totally agree with you, Sammy. I think that, you know, it's everybody's in the same boat worldwide. 
we're all in the same boat. Um, you know, and I think it's just sit back and really, if you need to, you know, write it out. And figure out yeah, where I love journaling. Oh my God, I love just, journaling. Weren't we just talking about that earlier? Exactly. <laughs> just, you know, take some time. Write out what do you really want? And, yeah. and talk to not only write your own stuff first. Yeah. Write out what do you really want for your own life. And this goes for either male or female. Yeah. What do you really, truly, honestly want for your life? And then go to your partner and, and have your them do it. I did a vision board with Isabella. It was yes. the most amazing experience to see. She's got five cars on her vision board. I'm not quite sure about that. But hey, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, Formula One racing driver, here we come. You know, but you've got the luxury of having the time to examine that kind of thing. And, kind of have and, and to discover what's on her mind of, you know, where would she like to live? You know, what's her ideal life for the two of us? Yeah. Of, okay, if we could live anywhere, what country would you like to live in? You know, and we've sat there with the globe of the world going around. Well, what's the weather like here and what beaches are there? We've had all kinds of discussions. Yeah. Um, and it's been absolutely eye-opening to watch how that mind works. But at the same time, it's been about getting clarity of what do I want? Yes. We're, you know, what am I willing... And also, what am I letting go of? I've done a lot of letting go over the last three months. And, you know, this was in my responsibilities and this was something I was working on. And I don't want to work on that. I don't want to spend this. The, because I have less time available at the moment, I really cut down what I'm working on because I don't have the time and energy to work on everything anymore. Yeah. And it's really made me force me to focus on well if you can't have it all what what is really important in having what do you what do you absolutely not negotiable yeah yeah and we've got the time to decide that yeah yeah so you know uh, part of being selfish is is having that time to discover those things and mm -hmm. absolutely so any final thoughts, ladies? We're over time as always. <laughs> Make time. I think, you know, we've got time now. So like Beth said earlier, if you have to lock yourself in a bathroom for five minutes, start with that and then learn how to, you know, set boundaries because we've got the luxury of being able to, you know, design how our lives will go now that we're not working or... Function. One of the biggest gifts I gave myself as a mom and as a woman is I started going to bed earlier and then I naturally wake up at about 3.30 or 4 a.m. Just naturally. I had no alarm, nothing of, oh, you have to be up. No, I wake up whatever time I wake up. Sometimes it's 5.30. Quite often it's 3.30, 4 a.m. Okay? Yeah, me too. That gives me yeah. till about 6.30 by myself. I get me time. Yes. <laughs> Going to bed earlier has given me quiet time when my mind is fresh, when I'm wide awake. Yeah. Where I can sit and go, okay, what do I want to do? As opposed to trying to work after she's gone to bed, which is what I used to push myself to doing. I'm no longer a night owl. I used to be a night owl when I didn't have a kid. <laughs> I'm not a night owl anymore. I'm exhausted. When, when After she goes to bed, if I stay up, it's to watch a movie or do something mindless. <laughs> but I'm not my most creative self at that hour. And so I recognize... <laughs> I think my final thoughts for everyone is just take some time. Really think about what you'd like. Write it down because thinking about it is one thing but when you start writing down all your thoughts there's a different when you reality write it down daily yes like, daily. you know and then you start seeing threads through it of wait a minute i've written about this three times four times five times 
And I think the other thing that my thoughts are on this all is, you know, if you're sitting in front of the TV binging on Netflix or Amazon Prime, maybe this is the time that you want to pick up a hobby that you've had in the back corner or you've had several books that are sitting on your shelf that you really want to read. Uh, that might be a really good time to do this now. And the other thing is, is really pay attention to how you're feeling about everybody around you. What are your thoughts? What are your... What are the patterns of thoughts? What are you saying about those people around you? Um, Absolutely. And, and journal on those thoughts. Yeah. And just one final thought. We've been talking about ditch the diet. Uh, we've talked about how diets don't work. Here's something for you that when women go on diets or men, you have a 107% chance of regaining that weight plus more in yes. less than 18 stop. months. What a statistic, so, eh? What a yes. statistic. Because we used to be told, we used to be told 80% is what you would regain. You know, everybody would regain. It's actually 107% of the people regain triple what they lost. So the, the, the motivation to ditch the diet and find a <laughs> lifestyle where you're, where you're joyful, where it's yeah. easy, you know? Um, and no, it's not necessarily joyful and easy when you're facing the feelings at the beginning. <laughs> it's, it can be a little messy at the beginning when, when, when you're digging into, oh my goodness, I'm eating because I'm frustrated. Uh -huh. and I don't like the feeling of frustration. Well, until you deal with it, you're going to continue eating. So and we're going to leave you there today, and we will see you all next week. Take time this week to take care of yourself. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Beth. All right. Catch you later. Bye. Bye.